Vincent, I have the esteemed title of Director of Performance and Fun Times here at Science World, and I think these are going to be some pretty fun times going on. Uh, I want to take this opportunity, oh, I'll let you know, in just a moment, that's going to be a terrible place to stand. <laughs> Uh, but I did want to introduce uh, someone you may know from Dinosaur Train, if you're a fan of that, but also from here at Science World, our president and CEO, Dr. Scott Sampson. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Science World and Telus World of Science. I am the fortunate fellow who gets to serve as the president and CEO of this great institution. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we're gathered on the traditional and unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples, the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh. They've been here for a little over 13,000 years, so 30 years isn't much compared to that, but uh, we, are, we are celebrating nonetheless. And it's a big deal, three decades old, like that's a whole generation. And in that time, we have served more than 18 million people. And we're very, very proud of that fact. So you've already seen a little bit of the history from Brian that we've hosted some very distinguished guests here. No less than Queen Elizabeth II um, said that this building was dedicated to the people of British Columbia. That we have hosted Chris Hatfield, Canada's first astronaut in a nationwide sing-along. Jane Goodall, um, Stephen Hawking was right here on this very stage doing a presentation. So, some of you will remember Mikhail Gorbachev who visited here at one time. So, a number of really renowned guests. In that 18 years, we've had phenomenal exhibitions that many people that are standing here will remember. Who can forget Grossology? or the science of sexuality, or the science behind Pixar, which was here just last summer. Um, it's really been fun hosting these world-class exhibitions here. Of course, I'm a dinosaur paleontologist, so I get excited about all the dinosaur exhibitions. Um, we got this amazing dome theater that's above us, which is still, remarkably, the biggest dome theater on the planet built for Expo 86 and still has the same technology in it and we will be changing all that out but it still does and here's a fun fact for you and I see Ian McLennan who's joined us here in the back and Ian will know this whether I'm telling you the truth or not but I have this fact writ that was given to me that if you take the bulb in the projector in the IMAX theater and you focus the light down to a point source and you point it into the sky, if you happen to be on the moon looking back at Earth, the light is so bright that you would see the light of that projector. Bright, yeah. No, you don't need to clap, but that's bright. That's <laughs> uh, right now, we are hosting one of the most popular films we have ever hosted in that theater, all about the Great Bear Rainforest, and if you get a chance, I highly recommend that. We do have some very big plans for Science World. Um, we're thinking about the next generation. We've been around for a full generation and we're contemplating the next one. We have a great reputation here as being a place to bring young kids to get excited about science and we do not want to lose that. We will keep doing that forever. In addition, we want to be about lifelong learning and we want to have deliverables, programs that are aimed much more than we do now at teens and adults. And we already do a lot, but we're going to scale that up. We're going to have more evening presentations, more weekend presentations intended for older audiences. So stay tuned for that. We want to become the place where British Columbians go to think about what a thriving future looks like. And this is a really interesting time because nobody really knows right now how to put together a thriving future. We know that it has to be high tech, and we know that it has to be nature rich, and beyond that, we're kind of confused. And so we are gonna to need to co-create this future with our community. We will need help from all of you to pull that off. And we've decided to focus on a single purpose going forward. We actually went out and asked our community, for the next generation, what should Science World be doing? And we decided to focus on one thing. We want to dramatically scale learning 
in science, technology, engineering, art and design, and math. And if you put all those together, you get an acronym that is STEAM. So we want to be STEAM powered moving forward. And we're, we know that when all these kids right here grow up and are looking for jobs, two thirds of the jobs that exist today won't exist anymore. And all those new jobs are gonna require literacy in things like science and technology. And so we wanna help the province get ready for this high tech engineering type, innovative design based future. Our vision is that within a generation, Canada will be a country of thriving communities that are sustainable and, and embedded in science, technology, and a deep connection to nature. So I hope you will all join us for those times. Now, in just a few minutes, you are going to watch these wonderful people do, or at least attempt to do, 30 experiments in five minutes. And I just want to introduce one of these people, I'm sure Brian will introduce them all, but I want to introduce one of these people, Angie Skidmore. Angie, would you come on here? So Angie is part of the team, but we're thrilled to host Angie here today because Angie was born 30 years ago on March 6, 19, sorry, May 6, <laughs> May 6, 1989. So 30 years ago today, the day that Science World opened was Angie's true birthday. So thank you. It is a thrill to have you. And uh, I have been asked to do one last ceremony and I've decided not to do it. Instead, I am going to ask somebody else to help me. So we, Barbara, if you would mind coming down here, please. And as you're walking down, I'm going to introduce you. We have with us today Barbara Brink who is one of the founders of Science World. Uh, if it were not for Barbara Brink, we would not be standing here today. And when I saw that Barbara joined us, I thought how appropriate that Barbara could come and cut the cake 30 years in. So would you please give Barbara a hand? It is all of you, you can cut it any way you would like, including a, a geodesic dome. <laughs> I think even one big cut all the way across will do it. We won't make you cut the whole thing. Yeah! Thank you so much, Barbara. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. I think I'm like one of the luckiest people in the world to have the job that I do. And now I get to sit back and watch these crazy people attempt to do 30 experiments in five minutes. So thank you. This is great. And Brian, I'm going to let things, let you run this stuff now. Okay. Thank you all very much. Dr. Scott Sampson, ladies and gentlemen. All right, as Scott mentioned, we're going to attempt. Some of you who might have been around when we turned 25. We did 25 demonstrations in five years back then, and we've started a dangerous precedent that we're hoping we don't get to 50 because it really could get unpleasant. But no, we're going to try and top it. We're going to do 30 demonstrations in five minutes. Now some of the team I want to introduce to you. To add to the excitement drama of the whole works, we have a genius piano player, that's Mr. Matt Grinke. Over there. Uh, Matt, remind me, what is the name of your big band? Happiest big band on the planet. If you want some great Disney and Pixar, talk to Matt Drinky about that. Uh, we've met Angie Skidmore, who works with our Super Science Club. Uh, we have Bronwyn, who was part of our 25 and 5, five years ago. We have Josh. Josh, you mentioned you are celebrating your six-year anniversary with Science World today. 20% so, of Science World is Josh. <laughs> Uh, we have Kristen, who was also part of the team back five years ago. We have Lieutenant, who is celebrating her one-year anniversary with Science World here today. Uh, a few things to let you know about as we go through here. We are going to be counting down the demonstrations on the big screen. We also have, from some of our partners, four remote videos that are coming in as part of these 30. So we have some of our alumni from Science World who are working in the education field. We have people from our on-the-road team. We have a demonstration shot from our outdoor stage, and we have something quite ridiculous from the University of Guelph and two people who are known as the Monsters of Schlock. 
uh, but I'll let you look forward to that. Uh, since we are inventing this, we get to make up the rules for it. So, two rules. One is, of course, safety is always paramount for us. You know, goggles on, everyone. If you see them put their ear protectors on, put your ear protectors on. We have a couple of things that will be loud. We'll try and give you a heads up, but there are going to be some loud things from time to time. Stay out of that red zone at all times. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and on the subject of safety, if at any point any of our staff feels that there's something going on, we need to stop for safety reasons, they're going to say stop, we're going to pause the count, we're, we may reset a little bit, but it's an exciting day, but we don't want to do anything that will sacrifice safety. In addition to that, I am also reserving the rights for one timeout if we need to huddle up at some point and realize what's going wrong. <laughs> I mean, what, 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 what amazing opportunities we have moving forward. Team, are you ready? Audience, are you ready? I will be narrating all the demonstrations as we go through. Team is in position. We start the clock now. Our first demonstration involves powering up the vacuum cannon. We have to take some air out. You're going to see that in just a moment because right now Josh is coming out with demonstration number one, a fireball coming from fuel oxygen and heat. Demonstration number two is myself and Kristen showing on a spinning platform as you go from a large circle to a small circle. You are going to make the speed go up. Angular momentum in action. Demonstration number three coming forward now is not gravity, but is in fact this demonstration, the vacuum cannon. We've drawn out that air, we're going to puncture it. Shooting a ping pong ball at over a thousand kilometers per hour. Right now, Broadwin has got a collection here for demonstration number four. We are mixing a gas and a liquid. It's a chemical indicator indicating we have got oxygen. Moving on to demonstration number five. Look to the back of the stage. Andy Skidmore there is going to pull out the table box. Demonstration number six, Josh is moving forward now. He has got liquid nitrogen and a poor, sad balloon dog. That balloon dog is going to learn about what happens when you take away heat from those molecules. They're going down there, they're slowing down, and our balloon doggy is now a chili dog. But if we add some energy from the heat and the air around there, we'll find Demonstration number six is from one of our veterans here. That is a teacher who is shooting flaming arrows at a hydrogen balloon. Brandon Driscoll. Demonstration number seven coming forward now. Luciana is going to show you when you mix carbon dioxide with water, you create carbonic acid. That indicator there will detect the acid. And as we begin to blow, we go from a lovely green color like our flaming balloon to a beautiful yellow. Here we go. That is demonstration number seven. Demonstration number eight here. We have got our lead floor and heat ball. Our demonstration number nine. We're going to step that up one more because we are shooting our toilet paper in the air there. I look what happened. I've missed one demonstration, so I'm moving forward one now because we are in fact on demonstration number 11. Here we go. Two balls dropped by themselves. But if we place one on top of the other, watch your head. Two balls come sailing forward. Demonstration number 12. This comes from our on the road team in Salmon Arm, Salmon Arm, British Columbia, where they're showing you a fire tornado. Three shows done all over the province now. Demonstration number 13. Luciana is pumping up our balloon there in our bottle. We have got some alcohol that condenses to make a cloud in a bottle, ladies and gentlemen. Demonstration number 14. Josh is going to show us complete combustion as we set fire to our flash paper and fuel has been burned. Demonstration number 15. We are going to cover our ears because right now we have made acetylene and an explosion. Demonstration number 16. I'm going to duck at this point because we are demonstrating potential and kinetic energy. Potential energy is going to stretch back. Watch for the chicken coming your way. Release. Demonstration number 17. We have vibrations causing the water to vibrate. Tuning fork and water. And now moving on to our next water demonstration. It is in fact Josh. He has a cup of water, a lid that does not fit. And yet, from the power of air pressure, the lid stays in place. Demonstration number 18. Demonstration number 19 coming into place right now. I'm ducking once again. There goes our lovely centrifugal acceleration tray. Demonstration number 20 coming from our outdoor stage. We have put dry ice 
into a pop bottle, submerged in that water, and it will explode just like that. Time out! Okay, guys, we've got a minute 18 left and 10 demonstrations to go. Can we do it? All right, we are going to use this timeout to briefly remove all of the liquid from where we're going to put the high voltage device. <laughs> all right, ready team, we're starting the clock again with demonstration number 21. We've got the Van de Graaff generator. Van de Graaff generator allows a uh, recharge to make hairs repel. We're going to repel the hairs on the head of Angie. Angie is shaking her head briefly, and Angie is, there we go, they've gone up a slight amount. <laughs> Angie, look down, and we move on to our second. Demonstration number 22, look at those! Oh. Look there! Demonstration number 23, pain! Ow! Spark, 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 ow! Demonstration number 24 is coming forward there. These are our friends from the University of Guelph showing things you should not do with a high voltage Tesla coil. Oh. Demonstration number 25 is moving forward now. It's another fireball done in the hands from Kristen. We're gonna drop our like a podium. We're gonna hope it lights carefully. Whoa! Oh. Oh. Where did the 